Kenny Omega said something that I thought was pretty interesting the other day, and it sounds like there's a good number of other people that thought it was interesting too, in reference to AEW and NXT. He said, to a larger effect, that when you watch AEW, you are going to see real stars, not developmental guys. Hmm. Hmm. You're going to watch real stars, not developmental guys. Now, I am not here to crap on Kenny Omega, because in the grand scheme of things, the guy could have said far, far, far worse things, far more inflammatory things, far more ridiculous things. In the grand scheme of things, this wasn't that bad. But it can be perceived as being a little bit concerning in terms of a potential disconnection from actual reality with Omega and some of the other EVPs of All Elite Wrestling. And, and let me say this to start off with, is if Kenny Omega had just said that if you tune in to All Elite Wrestling starting on Wednesday, October 2nd, you're going to see great action, you're going to see great characters, you're going to see great wrestling, you're going to see real stars. And it pretty much left it at that. We could kind of pick apart what he had said, good, bad, or otherwise. But fundamentally, there's nothing really wrong with saying that. That is an element of where you're hyping up your own product, showing confidence and faith in what you guys are going to do, what you believe in, and what you're going to be about. You're not putting anybody else out there. You're not comparing or contrasting anybody else. You're just staying on your own merits and your own beliefs and your own vision and focus. And that would be perfectly okay, perfectly fine. In fact, encouraged. That feels like reasonable pump up of your own product, doesn't it? That feels like something that would be reasonable to say about your own product. What are you going to say? You're going to come out there and say, hey, you know what? Start watching our show in October. We ain't got stars. It's going to take a while. It's going to be the shits. But eventually we'll figure it out and get it right. He can't go out there and say that. I mean, what the hell is the guy supposed to say? So if he had just said that, I would have no issue with it. I'd be like, that's fine. That's typical stuff you would want to say when you're trying to promote and market your product and get people interested and engaged and want them to tune in and watch every Wednesday night. But it's when you start taking little pot shots like you're going to see real stars and not developmental guys. It just feels like a really, really dumb statement to make. Because number one, when we're talking about real stars, let's keep it completely honest here. How many real, true stars does All Elite Wrestling have? Not your freaking, they're big in Japan or they're big in the independent scene. Really, true, big stars. How many real stars do you have? You really, for all intents and purposes, have two. And frankly, in terms of real name recognition and face recognition, you can debate whether the biggest, most well-known star is Chris Jericho or Jim Ross. Tell me I'm wrong. What are you going to say, freaking Cody or John Moxley? Give me a fucking break. It's either Chris Jericho or it's JR. And honestly, you could have a legit discussion about which one of those is the bigger star and the more recognizable household name out of those two. Which still points out something that is glaringly obvious here. Is the lack of real, true stars, when I'm talking about either your biggest name or your second biggest name, is your freaking commentator. Now, that's not a bad thing in the sense of you need recognizable names, recognizable faces, and JR most certainly is that, a guy that you can send out there to do the interviews. He has polish with doing it. He has years of experience doing it. He can get across the right message when he's doing an interview on a Fox sports radio or a CBS sports radio or any other radio or t television outlets. Like, he knows what he's doing, so that's okay. There's name recognition. Oh, I remember him from back in the day. This is where he's at now. I might have to check him out because I like good old JR. You get what I'm saying? Like that in and of itself is not a problem. Having a Jim Ross in the fold can be really, really good. The problem is, is that he's one of your two biggest recognizable names. Now you're going to say, well, what about Goldust? Well, he's not wrestling as Goldust. He's wrestling as Dustin Rhodes. Like, let's keep it real here. 
And Goldust was never a big major star. He was a mid-card type of guy. That's what he was at his best. He was a good one. He was an entertaining act. But the entertaining act that he was, he's not going to be wrestling as in All Elite Wrestling. And if you want to say, well, John Moxley, Dean Ambrose has a lot of recognition, well, compared to the guys in AEW, yes. But it's not like he was exactly a box office bonanza. Hey, he was there in WWE. His business continued to dwindle. He was a guy that was world champion, multiple time, you know, mid card champion, tag team champion. Like it's not exactly like Dean Ambrose. John Moxley was a big boon for that business. Same thing with Cody Rhodes. Even though he was never world champion, you know, he had mid card titles, tag titles. He was never a big boon to box office business by any stretch of the imagination. So to sit there and say that you have real stars, what the hell are you talking about? And that the other guys have developmental guys, well, so do you. If most of your roster signed on to WWE, they would all be sent to NXT. That's the reality. That's the truth. So when you bring up something like that saying you've got real stars, you got a couple of them. One's pushing 50 and the other one's your commentator. What the hell are you talking about? Well, it's even more ridiculous and I feel like reckless about it. Outside of just the clear disconnect from reality of where this company is, it's going to take time to build stars. It's going to take time to build up these talents. It's going to take up time to do a lot of these things. It is not going to happen overnight. But the bigger thing I thought was reckless here is throwing that out there. What happens if NXT beats you in the ratings? Like, really truly think about how much you're setting yourself up to look like the horse's ass here, Kenny. If NXT beats you in the ratings, then a bunch of developmental guys beat you, then what the hell does that say about your company and your product and your television show? You got a bunch of fans out there say, oh, he says they're going to have real stars and these guys are developmental. But then you tune in October 2nd and you don't see real stars on All Elite Wrestling's TV show. And then you look the next day or two in the ratings on the internet and you see that NXT beat AEW. You're like, well, shit, they've got to have bigger stars, even though they are developmental guys. Just like AEW is a roster full of developmental guys. If anything, that could be potentially exciting about All Elite Wrestling. It's a new company with new names that you have a chance to introduce to a larger audience on a grander scale. Now, the execution is going to be critical. Picking the right guys is going to be crucial. And it's going to take a lot of work to do things right to be able to maintain and grow what you're doing and be able to sustain over the long term. But you're starting off from square one. You're starting off from scratch. That in itself could be very incredible, very exciting. But you set yourself up to look like the horse's ass unnecessarily by saying another product that you're going up against is full of developmental guys when your brand is pretty much nothing but developmental guys too. And on top of all of that, on top of all of that, really opening yourself up to look horrible and make your company look bad. If you get beat in the ratings by it. This is, again, the whole thing of, I understand when you go out there and do interviews or you do stuff, there's going to be that feel, that need, that appeal to address the head-to-head -head competition. There's going to be that feel, that desire, that need to want to lash out and try to grab on to your place in the market and grab every piece of market share you can. But I'm sorry, right now, I'm going to say this again. The guys in charge of AEW, everyone involved with AEW, act like NXT and WWE don't exist. You are at a place, you are at a time where the ounce of energy that you have that is dedicated to professional wrestling should, and rightfully so, be dedicated to the new company that you are founding, that you are starting. Every ounce of energy that you invest in taking shots at Vince or Hunter or WWE or NXT is an ounce of energy that you are sapping from your own product. And right now, that is bad business. That makes absolutely no sense. It gets to the point where while you feel like you're getting a certain circle jerk reaction from the hardcore fans that are going to feed into this crap, it's not doing anything when you're trying to grow the scope and breadth of your audience. If anything, by taking those shots, you're going to give 
airtime to NXT and WWE on your own television, which is going to eventually serve as built-in free advertising for Vince and his product, and fans are going to start checking them out. Do you see why this might be a bad idea, Kenny Omega? Believe in your product, yes. Believe in your vision. Believe in your direction. Believe in your company. I am totally on board and totally supportive of that. But stop obsessing over things that aren't related to your company at this current time, no matter what your personal or professional feelings are towards NXT, WWE, Vince, Hunter, you name it. Let it go. Don't waste the energy that you don't need to. Because all you're doing is setting yourself and the company up to look bad here. Stop it! Stop it! Talk about AEW. Focus on AEW. Emphasize AEW. Forget everything else professional wrestling except AEW!